Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 NLN Annual Business Meeting. Please welcome National League for Nursing President, Dr. Patricia Yoder-Wise. Thank you. Uh, before we start, please know that we will be using the polling function during the business meeting. So you want to be sure to find that before we get to the place where we will actually be voting on some things. Welcome to the 2020 Annual Business Meeting of the National League for Nursing. The meeting is now called to order and will be in session until 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. To begin, we have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda for the NLN business meeting. At this time, you will be presented with a Zoom poll. We ask members to vote on this motion. Uh, to vote on this motion uh, through the poll. You may choose in favor of, opposed to, or abstaining. The poll will be live for 10 seconds Please submit your vote. The, the motion has passed uh, to accept the uh, business meeting agenda. The motion is carried. The first item of business before us is the approval of the business meeting minutes from 2019. At the January 2020 meeting, the Board of Governors, in accordance with the established process, reviewed and approved the minutes of the 2019 business meeting held in Washington, D.C. We now have a motion and a second to refer the minutes from this meeting for the 2020 business meeting to the Board of Governors for approval. Again, you will be presented with a Zoom poll and we will ask members to vote on this motion through the poll. Again, you will have 10 seconds to vote on this motion. Again, uh, that motion has passed. Thank you all for your vote. Um, and we will refer the minutes then of this meeting to the Board of Governors. I now welcome NLN CEO, Dr. Beverly Malone. Bev? Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending our 2020 business meeting. Colleagues, the NLN remains the leader in nursing education. Member engagement continues to be our strength and our most valuable commodity. Thank you to the thousands of nurse educators involved with the NLN. You are the backbone of our work to bring resources to all our members who teach in programs across the academic spectrum. I am so pleased to bring you some great news about our members and their work on behalf of the NLN Chamberlain University School of Nursing Center for the advancement of the science of nursing education. We have, out of that center, we have two 2020 NLN press publications that will be released during the summit, including Clinical Simulations in Nursing from Conceptualization to Evaluation, third edition, Dr. Pamela Jeffries, editor. And the other one is Critical Conversations, moving from monologue to dialogue. Doctors Suzanne, Susan Fornaris and Mary Fay are the editors. This is a follow-up to their first book, Critical Conversations, The Guide for Teaching Thinking. Plus a special summit themed issue of the NLN's Nursing Education Perspectives or NEP, 
publishing the research focused on the recommendations of the IOM Future of Nursing Report 10 years later, edited by Dr. Susan Hassmiller, and Audrey Bouvet, and Teresa Schallenbarger. You can find this available at neponline.net. A call for manuscripts for the 2021 Special Summit Edition remains open until January 2021. This issue will be focused on workforce issues. Call for manuscripts are underway. Finally, this year, Dr. Barbara Patterson assumed the role of editor for NEP. We thank Dr. Joyce Fitzpatrick for her extraordinary service as editor for so many years. I can also report that the NLN certification department now offers two certifications for academic nurse educators. Since 2005, over 7,600 academic nurse educators have earned the credential of Certified Nurse Educator, CNE. This credential measures excellence as an academic nurse educator, practicing in the full scope of the role. In the past year, 625 nurse educators were added to the certification roster. In recognition of the thousands of academic nurse educators who practice as a clinical educator only or an adjunct or preceptor or one of the other titles referring to the same role of being with students during clinical experiences, a second academic nurse educator certification exam was created. We are proud to report that during the past year, 106 clinical nurse educators have earned the credential of CNECL. And now for an update on NLN testing services. Fluid and flexible is the motto for our testing department this fall. As we readied for the fall testing season, testing services has built in a remote record and review option for all exams to allow for seamless testing on campus or by remote. Our focus has been to provide the best uninterrupted services we could offer. I'm also pleased to let you know that Dr. Ronald Seibert has joined the NLN as Senior Business Director. He will be assuming oversight of NLN testing services and helping the NLN grow our business in many different ways. Dr. Seibert is an accomplished higher education administration and nonprofit executive with more than 20 years of experience working across sectors internationally. Prior to joining the NLN, he served as the director of market development and initially as the strategic Alliance Director at the Graduate Management Admission Council. While there, he established organizational linkages in the US, Canada, Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa that catalyzed expansion of the Council's standardized testing markets around the world. We are very pleased to have him on the NLN team. For the fall semester, we have several new testing products and services, including the launch of our new exam here at Summit 2020 called HOPE, HOPE, our brand new health occupations placement exam. Additionally, our NCLEX live reviews went virtual last spring and continue through the fall for the safety of faculty, staff, and students. We have even added a one-day virtual review for direct purchase by students. Be sure to stop by the virtual exhibit hall booth to learn more. The NLN testing team is dedicated to supporting the needs of our customers and students to the best of our ability. This has also been another banner year for the NLN's 
Communications and Marketing Outreach. Colleagues, I am so excited to share with you an update about a new visual for the NLN. Earlier this year, the Communications Department, led by Communications Director Mike Keaton, with Creative Designer India West, and Marketing and Communications Manager Nikki Brown, began working with an outside design firm to overhaul the NLN's logo and branding. The goal was to create a new, more modern logo that reflects the history and mission of the NLN while being more appealing to current and prospective nurse educators. I am pleased to share with you the results of their work today. The new NLN logo. Dun, dun, dun. As you can see, the new logo features the NLN name in a bold, bright blue color. The four is italicized in a shade of yellow to stand out and emphasize that this is the National League for nursing, not of nursing, as it is sometimes mistakenly called. To the left of the name is the NLN's acronym in a fun design element topped by an open book illustrating the educational nature of the association. We believe this logo represents a bold, more contemporary take on the NLN as it is today. Other graphics and the new color scheme will be unveiled through the end of the year. We hope you will be as excited as we are about this new direction for the NLN. Next, I would like to speak briefly about the NLN elections. I encourage you all, including licensed practical nurses or LPNs and LVNs, an associate degree, baccalaureate, masters, DNP, and PhD nurses to nominate people or yourselves for leadership positions within the NLN. We value your experience, knowledge, and leadership skills that can only enhance the NLN as the voice for nursing education. So please nominate and then vote in our next year's election. A word about the importance of elections, colleagues. As you know, this will be a big election in the history of our country as we vote for candidates at the local, state, congressional, and presidential levels. As the most trusted professionals in the delivery of health care, nurses have much to contribute to public policy and conversations, plus actions around the future of healthcare. Our insights carry weight. Our needs reflect the needs of the people we serve and heal and must be taken seriously. So, <clears throat> as we approach election day during this public health crisis, please consider the safest way to cast your vote. Every state allows a number of mail-in or early voting alternatives. States are also looking at how to provide socially distant in-person voting. See your options at usa.gov slash voting. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented pain, grief, and destruction to the health and well-being of our nation's citizens and economy. Thus far, there has been almost 7 million, yes, I did say it, 7 million confirmed cases in the US that have resulted in over 200,000 deaths. The healthcare professionals on the front lines of this pandemic have been stretched beyond their limits. Kudos to all essential workers. We are saving lives every day. COVID-19 is unlikely to be the last pandemic our world faces. Nurses and other frontline healthcare professionals will always be at a greater risk than others. And the stakes are higher than ever before this year. We understand that many challenges continue to face our country and that nurses continue to answer the call to meet the demands of our nation's health and safety. 
from rural towns to urban centers, with over 4 million nurses nationwide, there is truly power in our voice. So, this year, during the International Year of the Nurse and the Midwife, exercise your power by going from the front lines to the voting lines to cast your ballot in the 2020 election. Speaking of COVID-19 pandemic, of that pandemic, our pandemic, I talked this morning about the impact of this disease on nursing education. As you have probably experienced, there has been an even greater shift to virtual education, which was becoming increasingly common even before the, the pandemic struck. COVID-19, of course, has accelerated that shift. Although online education is nothing new, the NLN has been trying to get faculty to get back some of the basics on good teaching by focusing on student learning outcomes and teaching and learning strategies that assist in achieving the specific learning objectives being sought. This may mean, for example, designing tighter lesson plans, providing more opportunity to engage learners in remote activities that have them solving problems, and using the content and working together with the educator guiding those conversations. Expanding on our popular Take AIM webinar series this spring, we have designed three new upcoming webinars that focus on just that. How educators have used good teaching and learning around the domains of cognitive, psychosocial, and effective and transform their online classrooms. You can still sign up for these free webinars through our e-blast for the next few weeks or by visiting nln.org. Just click on our Coronavirus Resource Center. You can find previous Take AIM webinars there, free for download too. As always, we are with you, your family, your colleagues, and we wish you all the best as we work together through this public health crisis. Now please join me in welcoming Judy Judith Halstead, Executive Director of the NLN Commission for Nursing Education Accreditation, or NLN CNAA, to give us an update. Judy? Thank you, Bev, and good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to bring you a brief update about the NLN CNEA, the Commission for Nursing Education Accreditation. As a reminder, the CNEA was voted into existence by NLN members at the September 2013 summit, and I've been privileged to serve as the executive director since July of 2014. During these six plus years, the NLN CNEA has continued to grow in its delivery of accreditation services. As of fall of 2020, the NLN CNEA will have pre-accredited or accredited 110 programs, including practical vocational nursing, registered nurse diploma programs, associate degree, baccalaureate, master's, and clinical doctorate programs. We also are engaged in accreditation at the International Nursing Education uh, 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 Area. So I thank the many volunteers who are sharing their considerable expertise with the NLN CNEA and who has made it so successful uh, today. The NLN CNEA was recommended by Nasiki in July of 2019 for recognition from the U.S. Department of Education, and we are awaiting a final decision from the Secretary of Education. Details related to our USDE recognition process can be found on the NLN CNEA website. We are looking forward to another successful year of continued growth, and I thank you. Bev, you are on mute.
Okay, uh, Bev, thank you very much for that report. Uh, and Judith, thank you for the report too. Uh, I'm going to turn now to Dr. Ann Krause to give the NLN Treasures report. Ann? Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Madam President. I present this report on behalf of the Finance Committee. You have all heard of the NLN's core values. Most organizations have core value statements and only some of them are lived throughout the organization. Let me share how the values penetrate the Finance Committee. Obviously, the Finance Committee is vested with the care of the fiduciary picture of the organization. That is true for most organizations. We use the value of integrity to consider how best to use our resources. And so you will see again that our reserves are decreasing and our services are improving for the long term. When we think of diversity, we often think of the visible aspects of diversity. Gender, age, and race are three common examples. The Finance Committee excels at an aspect of diversity we don't often discuss intellectual diversity. The committee is comprised of nurses, nurse educators, and administrators in diverse areas of higher education. Our common goal is one of ensuring the NLN's financial excellence. I would like to thank the finance committee members, Angela Amar, Michael Newsom, Mark Vogt, and Lynette Wolford, along with our investment advisor, Don Chuck, for their service to the NLN. Now let us look at the NLN's revenue trends. The NLN services include workshops, summit, testing, and support from third parties. Revenue across these service lines has remained fairly stable throughout the past four years. NLN operating expenses have also remained fairly steady during the past four years. Travel costs were slightly higher in 2018 because of the location of the summit. In 2019, travel and professional fees decreased. The NLN continues to excel in providing excellence and service in a fiscally responsible way. The NLN realized an annual operating surplus greater than 200,000 in 2017 and 18. The significant increase in operating surplus in 2019 includes the impact of the stock market investments. The surplus from 2019 was invested in CNEA, similar to 2015 through 19. In 2016, additional funds were used for pension termination. A positive trend in operating surplus indicates th that the NLN is a fiscally responsible organization. Planned expenditures such as investment and CNEA are reflected in the decrease in the NLN reserve fund balance for the years 2016 to 2018. Yearly, the Finance Committee reviews the investment strategy and portfolio to ensure that the NLN maintains a strong financial foundation to support the organization now and in the future. The NLN continues its commitment to its core mission of serving nurse educators in a fiscally responsible manner. Innovation by the NLN and its affiliates ensures the continued financial stability and growth of the NLN. The NLN is currently weathering, weathering the effect of COVID-19 with the receipt of $750,000 in grants from the federal government. The NLN has maintained its staffing and salaries in concordance with the grant requirements. This concludes the report of the treasurer. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anne, for your service and for the great report. I now invite Dr. Cole Edmondson, chair of the NLN Foundation of Nursing Education Board of Trustees to present the foundation's annual report to the membership. Cole. Thank you, Dr. Yoder Wise, and thank you to the amazing foundation staff and board. We're truly grateful for all of your support and service. A very special note of gratitude to Tatiana Nin. Thank you for your work, your leadership, and your passion for supporting the nursing profession through the NLN Foundation. 
As the chair of the NLN Foundation, I'm truly honored to share with you how your generosity is paving the way for the future of the profession by preparing tomorrow's workforce. The NLN Foundation proudly supports many initiatives that help us preserve the past, celebrate today, and build the future of nursing education. One of them is the NLN Archives Project. We have been building an archive at the Barbara Bates Center for the Study of the History of Nursing at the University of Pennsylvania in order to preserve our past. This project is supported by a matching grant of $25,000 from the Independence Foundation of Philadelphia. I'm pleased to announce that we have met our goal for the past four years and are entering the final phase of this project. I would encourage you to visit the NLN website to learn more about the history of the NLN and how to access this wonderful resource. As leaders in nursing education, we are building the future through our signature NLN Foundation Faculty Scholarship Program, the NLN Research Grants, and the NLN Scholarly Writing Retreat. I'm proud to announce that this year we awarded 18 scholarships to very deserving students. This is thanks to the generous donors like you and our partnership with Home Instead Senior Care, this partnership allowed us to help six nursing students seeking to improve the care of older adults. We have also awarded five research grants to foster the science of nursing education. The foundation has implemented fundraising strategies to meet the yearly fundraising goals. For instance, in 2016, we established a growing advisory council with the members from all sectors of healthcare to provide expertise, guidance, and to develop critical insights for the NLN Foundation to help support and accelerate us in achieving our mission. These members also make a yearly contribution that positively impacts our fundraising goal. We are thankful for their support and invite you to learn more about them on our website. I'm grateful for their fearless, bold, courageous, and impactful leadership and the sharing of their wisdom with the NLN. For the fourth consecutive year, the NLN Foundation has partnered with the NLN Recognition Program to carry out a class giving project for the Centers of Excellence and the NLN Academy inductees. The level of excellence that these organizations and individuals represent inspires all of us to be more, to do more, and to dream more. I wanna specifically thank Patrick Robinson, Amy Nichols, Richard Pullen, and Rebecca Cronk for their outstanding leadership and support of the project at the highest level. You will find their names and logos on our virtual summit thank you wall along with those of other wonderful benefactors. Thank you all, because it represents over $21,000 from schools, individuals, and organizations. Another amazing way to support the foundation is by shopping. Shopping for great and beautiful jewelry. Our partners from A Fashion Haven have worked hard on their website to serve you all, and we hope you visit them and, as I say, shop, shop, shop. Buy a little something for yourself or another loved one, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's gonna be the holidays before we know it. I want to both acknowledge and celebrate that this is really the year of the nurse and midwife. It is certainly not the year we envisioned, but it has demonstrated clearly the strength, the courage, the critical role, and the impact of the entire nursing profession, locally, nationally, and internationally. I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you to every nurse, everywhere, in every role because you are incredible. You are loved and I'm humbled by your contributions, your impact and your leadership. I want to invite you all to visit the NLN's Year of the Nurse website and take a moment to honor a nurse and leave a legacy of a profession that is both an art and science that is founded on a true love of humanity. Consider leaving a legacy in nursing education through the NLN Foundation. No gift is too small and there are no small acts of kindness. Colleagues, we are less than 20% away from our $301,000 fundraising goal for this year. This is the farthest we've been at this point in the year, and we need you to help get as close to 100% as possible by the end of the summit. So please visit our summit website, the app, or the NLN website to make a gift. Thank you for all your continued support and your commitment to nursing education. I'll turn it back to your amazing president, Dr. Pat Yoderweiss. Thank you. And thank you, Cole, for your leadership in the foundation, your commitment to NLN, and your generosity of supporting the foundation and NLN. We really appreciate you. 
Now is the time to declare the results of the 2020 elections. But before I do, I would like to thank the current NLN Board of Governors for their outstanding volunteer service to this organization. You have done incredibly good work during incredibly challenging times. Uh, just like us in our faculty roles, uh, we found ways to meet, to have tough discussions, to have very meaningful conversations around some of today's challenging topics. And we will continue those so that we too are better engaged with you and with our students. NLN bylaws, Article 6, Section 5, prescribes procedures that the NLN uses to elect its governing bodies. According to the code of the not-for-profit law under which the NLN is incorporated, members vote by proxy, and the proxies are voted by the president. To ensure the integrity of the election process and the security of the online voting process, an independent company performed an accountant's report that documents the election process. To ensure voting confidentiality, the election website was maintained by Survey and Ballot System Inc. No vote was received or handled by any person connected with the National League for Nursing. All elected candidates will take office at the close of this business meeting. At this time, according to the procedure, I am officially casting the member proxies and declare that the following elected individuals will take office at the close of the business meeting. Bercy Johnson Mallard and Delinda Volkert were elected to the NLN Nominations Committee for a three-year term. Congratulations. Laura Gonzalez and Larry Slater were elected to serve three-year terms as commissioners on the NLN Certification Commission. Congratulations to you too, too. I turn now to welcome the following individuals who have been elected to a three-year term on the NLN Board of Governors. Ann Kraus was re-elected to the Office of Treasurer. Yolanda Van Riel was elected to a three-year term on the NLN Board of Governors. And Cheryl Hoing was appointed to a three-year term on the NLN Board of Governors. Congratulations to the three of you. Uh, as part of the investor ceremony, would the newly elected board members please respond, I do, to the following pledge. And if you are available to uh, become active on web the website, that would be great. Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, and Cheryl, I think you, uh, there you are, great, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, this is the pledge. We hereby pledge our time and talent in support of the mission and goals of the National League for Nursing. In so doing, we will re represent the best interests of the organization and will not allow any personal or professional conflicts to interfere with our commitment to the welfare of the NLN. Please respond by saying, I do. I do. I do. Thank you so much and congratulations. I look forward to working with all of you. <clears throat> this completes the installation of our new Board of Governors members, Ann Krause, continuing in her role as treasurer, Yolanda Van Riel, and Cheryl Hoyne. Thank you so much. This concludes the introduction of all newly elected officials to the National League for Nursing and the NLN Certification Commission. In addition, amendments to the bylaws, including titles, were voted on. After this meeting, the designation of president and president-elect will be amended to chair and chair-elect, and the CEO will become that the, will hold the title of president and CEO. Now, before we adjourn, I had the fun of selecting two winners.
for the Summit 2021 registration. Off screen, these names were drawn from the listing of people who are here. And the winners are Zane Wolf and Pamela Ninganga. You should have received a text on your phone or in Zoom. I'm not sure which way it was. So congratulations to the two of you. You will receive registration to the 2021 um, NLN Summit, whether it is in person or again by Zoom. Thank you to everyone for joining us today and see you all at the 2021 Summit, wherever it might be, uh, whether in Washington, D.C. or back in Zoom. Be safe, be well. Thank you.